Jiku. My name is Nerd Squared, and today I'll be submitting Manifold Garden with the All God Cubes category. Uh, the estimate for this is around 41 minutes, and my PB is around 31 minutes. 31 minutes and 12 seconds to be exact. And uh, the estimate is as high as it is because there's one trick later on in the run at around the halfway mark, or starting at the halfway mark. Uh, that is a tiny bit luck based, although there is a way to manipulate it, as you'll see when we get there. But we'll get there when we get there. And another thing is that um, I'm commenting over my PB video, or the video of my personal best, which is 31 minutes 12 seconds. I'm commenting over my PB instead of commentating while doing a no reset, just because this game is one of those games, especially nowadays where it's just really hard to commentate while playing. That's not to say that it's hard to follow because it isn't in the grand scheme, it's just there's a lot going on, so it's hard to commentate every single thing while you're playing. So for the actual marathon performance of this, I definitely would have a couch explaining things, at least during the more hectic parts. Yeah, with that, we will go ahead and get going. A couple things to note uh, is well, for one, just to give a preview of what the speedrun is going to look like, uh, Manifold Garden is a puzzle game that's all about flipping gravity and impossible geometry type levels. It's really fun, especially in a speedrun. And also, in terms of timing, uh, timing for this run starts when we select the save file. Or in this case, when not you upright the save. There we go. Okay, so this is Manifold Garden. Uh, as you can see, the main mechanic in this game is flipping gravity. This is really, really important because uh, not only from a casual perspective, because you need a gravity flip mechanic to solve the puzzles, it's also pretty important for a speedrun because when you are falling, the movement speed you get while moving downwards is about five times faster than just plain old sprinting. And so for a lot of the run, you'll see me do these steps like this, where I flip gravity and then fall for a little bit. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of points in the run you'll see me do setups to fall like that, just to save a little bit of time over sprinting. Uh, as well, uh, your horizontal move speed is increased by, I think, 1.4 times. So anytime we'll be going any sort of distance, uh, I'll be wanting to move in the air just to get a slight just to get that slight move speed increase. You'll also see that I'm clipping through a lot of these walls. Uh, that's the cube clip. Essentially if you place a cube at your feet and certain conditions are met, uh, the cube will push you back a little bit and if you're next to a wall when that happens, the cube pushes you through the wall. And we use that for a lot of out-of-bounds in the run. In fact, we've already used it for a lot of out-of-bounds in this particular section. Uh, because the point of this section is you have to place these cubes in these receptacles to activate these lasers. And then once all three lasers are activated, uh, we get our first dark seed coming up. And you're supposed to do a bunch of puzzles to get to the point where you put the cubes in the receptacles, but we're skipping all of them with these wall clips. And wall clips are really what break this game wide open. Uh, pretty much every puzzle in this game, except for a select few, uh, we end up skipping. At least in the wall clip category. This is the wall clip all god cubes category, by the way. There is a variant of this category that doesn't use wall clips, and pretty much does the entire game as intended, but it's around 10 minutes slower than this. So we opted to do the wall I opted to submit wall clip instead. So there's our first dark seed. Uh, once we get the dark seed, we have to plant it in these trees, and then this cutscene activates where we get what's called a god cube uh, after this. Uh, the main objective of Manifold Garden is to get seven of these god cubes, and then once you get all seven, there's a fancy cutscene at the end where you go into what I guess is the equivalent of a black hole. It's really strange. You'll see at the end. And in any percent run, we'd skip all the god cubes except for the very last one. But obviously, this is all god cubes, so we'll have to get all seven of them. All seven of them. 
and these cutscenes would be a pretty good point for reading donations in the run because it's a lot of waiting with the button prompt at the end there being the only real break in the break in the downtime. So yeah. So we're gonna plant the dark seed or not the dark seed, but the god cube in this tree here. And once I plant the dark seed or god cube rather. So then we do this little movement trick right here, which might look a little odd, but don't worry, it's perfectly normal. Uh, to explain what happened just there, uh, the collision of the pathway there leading up to that door, including for the button, loads in before the actual model does. So what you can do is activate is uh, fall down there and then activate the button while you can't see it, and. If you do manage to do that, you save around 5 seconds as opposed to having to wait for the models to load in and then walking up to the door. It's kind of hard to do though because obviously you can't see where you're going, so you kind of just have to land about where I was did there and then just hope and pray that you hit the button. <laughs> but it's worth it to go for because if you get, there's like 6 of those doors will have to open and each one, each uh, button, invisible button hit, if you get it, saves five seconds. So in a half hour run like this, it definitely adds up, and if you can go for it, might as well go for it. So I mentioned this, there's very few puzzles that we do as intended, this is one of them. Uh, we just have to place these blue cubes to open this door. I'm gonna wait a bit to flip gravity before flipping gravity and falling, because if you move too early like I did there, uh, you'll hit some leftover collision in that doorway. This is also one of the other puzzles that we do as intended. We just have to place these cubes, which is interesting because these cubes flip in either direction, so we have to manipulate them in clever ways. And we're going to do it such that we can take this red cube with us because we need it for another wall clip in a second. Uh, certain gravity flips you'll see in this run, uh, I end up flipping them, flipping it really soon after falling. Uh, those gr particular gravity flips like that are actually pretty tight. So, you, and if you miss it, you end up falling off the edge. Luckily, uh, there's no death mechanic in Manifold Garden. Instead, you just fall to the top of the level and wrap back down to where you fell, which is nice because that means we won't have to worry about losing a whole lot of time to missing a trick, we can just fall back down and try again. And you'll notice as well when I was clipping with those cubes, I jerked the cube through the wall to bring it with me. Uh, that's a trick called flating, uh, which stands for flailing like an idiot technology. <laughs> Very appropriate trick name there. Uh, we basically use it to bring cubes where we normally shouldn't be able to. And how it works, at least in this version of the trick, is um, we cause a lag spike, which we do by taking a screenshot, and in the time of the game freezing, we, or in the brief moment of time that the game's frozen, when we take a screenshot, uh, we jerk the camera to the left or right, and if we time it right, that the cube goes through the wall, we can bring the cube with us. Uh, how we used to do it in the olden days is we would just flail the mouse around, or flail the camera around, as the trick name suggests, like an idiot, and just hope and pray that the cube goes to the wall, but thankfully we have a much more reliable method for flating now, which is the lag plates. Another thing that's kind of cool with this game is the game gradually introduces puzzle mechanics to you as you go through the different worlds, and the puzzle mechanic we can introduce to you here is this ball. Uh, the direction that the ball moves is dependent on the direction that you flip gravity. And so we have to manipulate it here to bring it through this tube. One more gravity flip after this, and the puzzle's done. You'll notice I waited at certain points in the puzzle. Uh, if you flip gravity when the ball gets to the bottom too soon, uh, the ball will get stuck because when the ball reaches the bottom or a corner in the maze there, uh, it has there's a little bounce that happens, and if you flip too soon during that bounce, uh, the ball will get stuck, and you'll have to reflip gravity again to get the ball unstuck. 
You know, there's another lag flates to bring the dark seed in. That section was pretty clean, but unfortunately at the end of this section I got a weird bug that I've been getting a lot lately in this game, where if where for whatever reason these mandala cutscenes at the end of every world take around 12 to 15 seconds longer to start than normal and we're not really sure why it happens um, my theory that I've had for this is if you stand too close to the tree the slow cutscene happens but we can tell pretty quickly and pretty reliably if we're gonna get a slow cutscene uh, you'll notice when we place these god cubes and or these dark seeds in the trees uh, that there's an animation where the tree shrinks after you plant it and then the god cube appears. If that animation of the tree shrinking doesn't play, then that means we got a slow cut scene. I did end up finding a method to uh, counteract the slow cut scene, as you'll see when we get to the end of the green segment. Uh, you'll notice in my splits there's six different colors for the, each of these segments. Uh, those represent the color of the dark seeds, or god cubes rather, that we get over the course of the game. And right now we're on our way to get the green god cube. And the green segment in particular is pretty short. Uh, there's not a whole lot that goes on here in terms of skips. There is one clip that we do though to skip part of the puzzle. And I mentioned before about how this game introduces puzzle mechanics to you as you go through the game. Uh, the puzzle mechanic we get introduced to here is some waterfalls, as you'll see in a second. Uh, that gravity clip in particular is really scary, <laughs> but thankfully I got it. Again, missing little gravity flips like that isn't too bad, because you can just fall back to where you fell off the world, because of how this game works. Got a little wall clip there with the green cube, or blue cube rather. And I have to position it pretty carefully there because if the cube is a little off from the water path that we get going here, uh, the, the cube won't register as redirecting the water path. Uh, the point of this puzzle is we have to redirect the water in order to power both of these generators here. And it's a pretty long puzzle. It's actually the longest puzzle in the game as far as I'm aware. There is one other puzzle later, or at least the longest puzzle in the speedrun. <laughs> there is one other puzzle that used to be the longest puzzle in the game, but we have a way of skipping that, as you'll, I will explain when we get there. Yeah, this puzzle is pretty much not as intended. The only real speed tricks being some gravity flips to get to the trees a bit faster. As a little optimization. But other than that, this would be a good point for being donations in the actual there is one trick I'm going to do though once we get this last cube put in front of the generator. So I'm going to gravity flip here and go to the point where the dark seed appears. And you'll notice me doing something a little unorthodox or a bit unexpected I guess. Uh, I'm going to save and load here once I get to the dark seed. And that might seem completely random but there's actually a purpose to it believe me. Uh, so normally when you activate the lasers and you go to get the dark seed, there's an animation that plays where the uh, lasers slowly turn on and then the dark seed activates. But it was found out pretty soon after the game's launch, I believe, where if you save and load, uh, it's completely it, like I'm not entirely sure how it works because I don't know the technical details behind it. But essentially it skips the animation of the lasers activating, so we can just get the dark seed immediately. Uh, there's only two dark seeds in the game where doing that save and load trick is useful, the green dark seed being one of them. You also notice before this mandala cutscene started that I paused and unpaused the game. Uh, I mentioned before that there's a trick I found to negate the slow cutscene bug I've been getting lately, and the pause and unpause is what does it. I Basically I pause and unpause right after planting the dark seed, and usually that gets rid of the slow cutscene every time. The pause trick I do though does carry with a bit of risk, uh, because 
if you pause the game while the game is in the uh, dark seed state, uh, there is a chance that the next dark seed, that the dark seed in the next world, won't spawn. If you pause and unpause when I do it, though, you usually don't have to worry about the dark seed uh, despawning. <laughs> if it does manage to despawn, though, um, we can just use a backup strat of using the debug panel to spawn the dark seed from the menu. So if that ends up happening, it's not a huge deal. We can just continue on with the run as normal. Missed the uh, gravity flip there, but that's fine. That's barely a second loss. Again, with the carefully routed out uh, gravity flips. As mentioned, each gravity flip in the game is pre-carefully planned out in order to make the most out of the speed boost from falling. That room just there before I flipped out being a good example. So yellow is the most hectic part of the run by far, because as a clip that you already saw me do a bit ago on that door, uh, a runner by the name of Forb, who is the current world record holder, found out about a month ago that not only can you clip through walls, you can also clip through these giant doors. Uh, it's a little more particular than clipping through walls, because how the clipping works in Manifold Garden uh, we, well, we don't entirely know how it works because this game is so young, but the running theory that we have now is Manifold Garden, in terms of cube hitboxes, kind of operates on a grid-like system in a sense, where when you place a cube on the ground, it picks a spot on the ground or on that grid, and it attaches itself to that spot once it's picked it, and there are certain values or certain spots on the ground where if you place a cube at your feet on those spots, uh, it allows you to clip through. For a wall, for normal wall clips, it's pretty gen. The spots to clip are pretty generous, but for doors, as I said, it's a lot more particular. There's only very specific spots on the ground, or I guess spots on the grid, where clipping through doors works, like this, and we're not really sure why it's like that, it just is. We do know, however, that, or at least I found out, that if you save and load, it makes the uh, wall clips through doors a bit more in your favor. It makes, uh, what I mean by that is, um, it makes the door clips work a bit better. Door, we might find out the reason why door clips work like they do, because door clips are a very new trick. And for now, it's almost pretty much random uh, whether or not it works. But as said though, there's a way to manipulate it. Alright, so as I explained all of that, we're already at the point where the next dark seed is. Are we going to wall clip into here? Because we need a yellow cube for some more clipping, which is just down here. That gravity flip is a little tight because you're falling really fast once you get to the point where you flip. And if you're like, I'd say a second or a half second too late, uh, you'd fall there. Luckily, as I said, uh, recovering from a fall like that isn't too bad. Again, like I said at the start, the main reason for the estimate being so high is because the door clip's potentially going awry. Realistically, at most, this category should be, or at longest, this category should be at around 34 minutes, even if the door clips go a little awry. I don't see it going anywhere past... 36 minutes at the absolute worst and that and that's if the run goes completely spaghetti <laughs> I just put that extra little padding in there for safety so yeah we get the dark seed and we can we can turn as it turns out as you saw in red as well we can clip with the dark seeds uh, because dark seeds and god cubes have pretty similar properties to cubes which means we can clip with them I reused that a couple of times in the run as you saw there in yellow and red. Another manual cutscene. Alright. So 
after that really long segment in yellow, we have two pretty rapid fire ones with yellow and purple, or purple and orange rather. Uh, in fact, the orange segment is the shortest segment in the run besides the intro and the very end, which are all two and a half minutes each. I believe I got the invisible button grab here. Yes, I did. It's five seconds safe right there. And I do a little kind of circle fall there. Uh, a weird thing I found that you can do with uh, little stairs like that is if you fall in on them in just the right way, uh, you can walk down them with the movement speed, you, with the horizontal move speed you would have from falling, which is a minor time saver there. have to backtrack a bit here to place these cubes so we can open this door. So purple, while it is one of the shortest segments, it's also one of the most hectic in terms of finding where to go. Because as I mentioned before that the game has a lot of impossible geometry type level design. And this is probably the most confusing level in the game, casually and in a speedrun. I can definitely tell you when I first started running this game, I got lost in this area a lot and lost a bunch of time just because of that. <laughs> but if you know where to go, it's not too bad. It just takes a bit of practice. And I'm doing all this uh, placements of the cube, like with that red cube in that one room, so I can um, move these purple cubes to get to where the dark seat is. Have a little bit of trouble placing in the receptacle there, but that's fine. Alright, so we've activated both the lasers and we'll get our dark seed. And luckily, the tree that we need to plant the dark seed in is just down here, so we can fall down and place it right here. I mentioned before about the slow cutscene, by the way. Uh, once we get past yellow, uh, we don't have to worry about the slow cutscene bug. The slow cutscene bug only seems to happen on the blue, red, green, and yellow, or blue, blue, red, and green Gaku trees. Once we get past that point, it, the slow cutscene almost never happens. So it's really only a problem in the first half of the run. Which, 12 seconds might not seem like much of a time loss in a 30 minute run, but when your PV gets as good as mine is at the moment, um, time losses like that definitely matter quite a bit. So yellow, or not yellow, orange, is a pretty good example of just how much you can break this game, even in a longer run, even in like, just on a short scale, even. After we get this invisible button grab, of course, hopefully. Yep, we got it. So there's a couple of long puzzles you normally would have to do in orange. Oh, this happened also. Uh, I meant to gravity flip there by accidentally, I guess I had a brain fart or something and I forgot to press right click to flip gravity. But that's fine, you can recover pretty quick from it. So we'll clip through this door with that red cube. That skips one long puzzle there where you'd have to manipulate water to fall down to the top of the room there to redirect it to that generator. And with this clip we skip the other puzzle you'd have to do in this section and we're already at the very end where the dark seat is. <laughs> That's how broken Manifold Garden is nowadays. It's crazy. And if you think it's and if you think it couldn't get crazier than this, uh uh around July twenty twenty this game got an update that added a whole new ending to the game. A secret ending, if you will. And it's actually a pretty convoluted ending to get in a casual playthrough, but with glitches we can beat that get to that get to the area where that ending happens and beat it in less than two minutes, or around two minutes. It's insane. And I think the GDQ crowd will really like it. I'll be submitting the secret end any percent run as a donation incentive alongside this. So that's our last normal Dark Seed and God Cube. We'll be going to the end section of the game now. Uh, once you get all the Dark Seeds and God Cubes, you do this final set of trials, which 
are the 800 rolls, or as I call them, roll 800. Because each level code, each of these levels have a level code associated with them. And each of the code level codes for these levels coming up start with 800. So I call it roll 800. And there's this big gate you'll get to see in a second uh, that we have to open with the switch. Also, the god cubes, and really any other cube, uh, when they bump into the stairs like that, and do that little clink, it's the best sound effect in the entire game. <laughs> we got a gravity clip before entering this door. Alright, so the Wooly 100 is kind of the, um, I guess you could say, puzzle rush, since there's no boss rush in this game, because it returns it brings back all the puzzle mechanics you've learned over the course of the game. And also, this puzzle is interesting. Uh, it's one of the, pretty much the only puzzle in the speedrun, actually, as far as I'm aware. Or you platform on a tree like that to solve the puzzle. There is a faster shot you can do there, where on the tree where the cubes spawn, you can climb up that tree and bring one of the cubes with you. But I'm not at all consistent that, enough with that to do it fast. So I just do it the normal way. Which isn't too much slower. It's, I'd say, only a few seconds slower compared to doing the fast strat in that room. And if you've seen an 80% run in this game, uh, this section is pretty much the exact same as any percent, except nowadays there's a trick we can do to skip a certain puzzle in this section that we'll get to in a moment. First I have to clip with this cube, which is a little scarier than it might look at first, because just an inch or so, or a foot or so to my left there, uh, is a place where if I clipped into that point, I would have soft locked. <laughs> and if we soft lock there, it's not too bad because we can just go into the console and turn and enable no clip, and just go into the hallway where I would have clipped into if I did it right. So in terms of backups, this game is, has a lot of them, so the speed run's pretty safe for a marathon showing. This section is, this map is pretty straightforward because uh, it's not too technical. It's just a calculated gravity flipping and a wall clip at the very end here. So while we go into this next hallway, I'll talk about the puzzle I was alluding to earlier where we used to not be able to skip it, but we can skip it now. Uh, it's the puzzle known as 806 because the level code is 806. 806 used to be the worst puzzle in the entire game because the puzzle features these large tetramino blocks like you might have seen in yellow and we'd have to do the puzzle as intended where we'd have to manipulate the positioning of the tetramino blocks by flipping gravity and the speed of the tetraminos is really slow like abysmally slow so the puzzle would take a long time. If you did it as intended, it would take around 50 seconds. We've Since door clips were discovered, however, we found a way to clip into the door at the very end of the puzzle room here. Which is huge, because like 806 used to be the bane of every Manifold Garden speedrunner's runs, and we don't even have to do it anymore. We can just skip it. And doing the saves... Well, it kind of depends on how fast you do the puzzle normally. For me, it ends up saving around 45 seconds. But if you're good at the puzzle, like a top-level speedrunner would be, uh, it only ends up saving around 20-25 seconds. But it's a time save, so we take those. Anyways, the clip is this. We just bring a cube to the door and clip through. As well, when I do that clip, I lag the game by taking a screenshot like I would with the lag plate just to make it a little easier. So that was the last puzzle before our last sky cube. Uh, we're gonna do some gravity flips to get to this tree. Uh, this puzzle is actually supposed to be a lot longer than I'm gonna make it look here. There's a lot more of... Re it, it's a puzzle like in green where you'd have to redirect the water. And you'd have to redirect the water in a lot more places, but we can just take the cube, take this cube here, grow this tree to get a couple more cubes, and then there's one spot down here where we have to redirect the water into this generator, and that's all we have to do for the puzzle. 
And after this, I'm going to do some more gravity flips to get to the Dark Seed, like so. And once I get to the Dark Seed, I'm going to do another one of those save load tricks like I did in green to skip the laser animation. And we got a pretty mandala cutscene once we plant the Dark Seed. Uh, fun fact I haven't mentioned about the colors of the God Cubes, by the way, is they represent the six directions that we can flip gravity in the game. Which is pretty cool. I won't go too deep into the lore, because it, it gets deep, believe me. Also, this particular save load trick has a side effect of occasionally causing this cutscene to screw up, like this. And we haven't really... It's, it's roughly a 60% chance of happening. And we also aren't sure why this happens. It just kind of happens. Alright, so... Once we get this god cube, we have about a minute or so walk until we get to this tree at the top of these stairs. Uh, so this is the point in the run where I would do shoutouts. Uh, in particular, I want to shout out, obviously, the GQ committee members who are watching this and for considering the run in the first place. Uh, Forb, who I mentioned before, who's the current world record holder, who, with a time of, I think, 28 minutes and 50 seconds. Gelly, who pioneered, I'd say, this game being at GDQ with his original run of any percent a year ago at GDQ 2020. Uh, his run at that marathon was actually what inspired me to pick this game up as a speed run. And I improved in this game pretty fast. Um, I picked it up around a month ago, and I already have a time that's third place on the leaderboard, which is insane. But there's a little trick here. Um, if I time my movement right, I can fall on the invisible geometry before the level loads. And there's another trick here as well, which happens pretty soon after that. Uh, if you flip gravity in the specific spots that I did, uh, you can teleport past a trigger that will prevent you from flipping gravity leading into this last section. This is the kaleidoscope fit. Uh, we're going to fall for about 47 seconds here once I land on the stairs, and there will be this kaleidoscope at the bottom. And it's a pretty, pretty great cutscene once we get there. One other person I wanted to shout out, by the way, <laughs> that I didn't get to before I explained the tricks, uh, William Shear, who is the developer of this game. He's been working on it since November 2012, I think, and the game came out seven years after that worked really, really dang hard on it, and the result paid off for sure. Anyways, time is going to be in a few seconds once the uh, kaleidoscope appears here. There we go. It's my Apple Garden of God Cubes. There will be this cutscene at the end as well. I'm going to let this play out because it's a really good cutscene. And as you can probably tell on the video, <laughs> uh, the kaleidoscope here, at least when you run on 3,000 bit rate or lower-ish, or actually this kaleidoscope period, uh, is a huge bit rate killer. Even if you run on really low graphic settings like I do, just to ensure that it doesn't uh, cause your computer to chug. That's just the nature of this game. It's so good graphically that the, compu that the, compu that the computer can't handle it. <laughs> so for a uh, if I have enough time during an actual performance of this, I might let the cutscene play out, but it's a few minutes long, and we might not have time to show it off, so I might not. But if that's possible, I might let this ending cutscene play out. Because this game, if you couldn't tell by now, is a very gorgeous game graphically, and I want people to experience it. This part in particular is really pretty. Just go silent for a bit while this end part plays out. I think another point, uh, an 
I mentioned doing shoutouts at the end of the run earlier. I think this cutscene would be a good point to do them as well. Just because, the, like I said earlier, there's so many rapid fire tricks in this game, tricks and glitches in this game, it's crazy, honestly. And I think because it's this game has grown so much as a speedrun since its last showing, I think it's definitely worth showing again. All God Keeps in particular is such a crazy route as you've seen here, and I think it would be good to show it. I, alongside this category, I'm also submitting uh, any percent standard ending, as it's called nowadays, uh, because there's been some route improvements in that category as well. But All God Cubes is going to be the main category to look at for this. Alright, so this cutscene is going to end pretty soon. So I think I'll sign off for now. Uh, I've been Nerd Squared. This was my submission for Manful Garden All God Cubes, and I hope you consider my run.